God tells us to go in different ways more than we realize. I mean, you think about it. You know, here's the Messiah. We, we, we don't think he ever would say no. But he wanted to. Well, he stated his case, but he ultimately obeyed God. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, why did he want to? At uh, least, that, that's, that's a whole week's worth of it. That's a deep one. <laughs> See, his flesh was one. He's like, I got to let my flesh out so my people understand that I am a fully man, but yet I am fully God. As a full, as a man, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt really, really bad. And this death thing, as a man, I don't know what this is going to do to me. It's probably not going to be very pleasant. But I know the outcome. And when you look at that story, he says, why did he endure the cross? For the joy that was set before him? I don't know about you, but I can't imagine hanging on the cross was too joyous. But he understood the outcome. It is joyful because I understand the big picture because everyone in the world will have a chance to be a child of God if they accept what I did. And I will overcome every evil system that has tried to oppress them, tried to hold them back, because remember the prophecy we read last week, that's what I'm here to do. Saul is a representative of the Pharisees and the Sadducees because he was supposed to know better. He was supposed to represent God to the people. And as a king, he was supposed to be writing down Always the words of God and studying them. And obviously we find out he definitely wasn't doing that because he let it slip. And David was going to pick that up for a little bit. He goes on. So Samuel did what the Lord said. Good man. Makes sense. Hopefully we do what the Lord says. But he goes on. And came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the city came trembling to meet him <laughs> and said, Oh, we're just curious, um, did you come in peace? Or did you come to pronounce judgment on us? Because we know you're a man of God, and as an elder of this city, I'm pretty sure a lot of us ain't living the way we're supposed to according to the law of Moses. So we're just wondering, we're smart enough to understand that we know what we're not supposed to be doing, and we know what we are, and we're not. Why are you here? And he goes on. And he said, in peace. I come in peace. And you could just see him. Whew. Good. Because I knew I was about ready to get wiped out because I know I was one of those ones that wasn't fulfilling the law the way the law of Moses said I should be living. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. And then he says, consecrate yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. He also consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Did he consecrate all of Jesse's sons? Well. No, because David wasn't there. David wasn't there. No, he was out with the sheep. He's out in the field. It's fascinating, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All the people was there because the prophet was there. <clears throat> but Daddy Jesse... Said, David, you ain't worthy to come. Don't worry yeah. about it. Just, you keep doing your job. Because we know this prophet ain't coming to see you, even if he's coming to pronounce judgment. Because at this point, we don't know. if I'm assuming they don't know why he's there yet. They're just like, Jesse, I want you and your boys to come here. Well, as Jesse's the father's calling his sons, come on, come on, come on, come on. He didn't go, oh, sir, can we wait till David comes from the field because he's one of my sons and you said my sons. Verse 5 says, he said, I come in peace. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves. Well, I think after I've done asking him the question, did you come in peace, I think I'd have jumped on that. Because what if he changes mind? He's telling me I get a chance to consecrate myself. Lord, I done messed up. I know it because this guy... Just told me to ask you to consecrate myself. I, I got I to gotta be, be in tune with you at least at this second. You know, 
Because tomorrow when he leaves, I'm, I'm probably going to be a rascal again. But right now, we are, we, are, we are good. We are good. Consecrate yourselves. And then he says, come with him. But it says he also consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Uh, hey, you're not the elders. Jesse, get all your boys and come. You can come too. So, ooh, why are you picking me out? You can call Fred and his family. You can call me and my boys. This could be, I don't know if this is good or bad because I wonder if he's asking the same thing. Is he calling us in peace? Consecrate yourselves. Come on, come to the sacrifice. I want you guys to come. So it happened when they had come, he looked at Eliab, the oldest son, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Well, at this point, we still have no idea why he's there. We know what he's thinking. They're probably wondering why he's looking at the oldest son. The oldest son's probably looking at why he's looking at me. But he looked at. Verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his height of his stature, because I've rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Do you think that's what the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, and all the people that rejected Jesus, the Messiah, that should have known better, standing on the banks of his baptism, when John said that's the Lamb of God, we're looking at, no, and you said it last week, no, well, I grew up with him, I was raised with him, went to the market, he was at the same market, no way, that's the Messiah. Yeah, some coincidences, he meets some of the parameters, but no, nothing special about him. Because then scriptures say he's an ordinary man. Samuel's getting ready to anoint the king and the God's going. No. Not the, not the best looking one. Not the tallest yeah. one. Yeah, deja vu, we not already the, had that. <laughs> not the strongest one. No, don't look, at, don't look at the outward appearance. I'm looking at their heart. Well, just as a side note, That's probably why God said David's a man after my own heart. I know what's in his heart. I know he's got some rough edges. I know I've got to work on some things. I know I'm going to have to forgive him for a lot of stuff. But he's got a heart that wants me.